Our Father Cares, a daily YouTube devotional with Christian Bredahl and the Shepherd's Call team. Join us for today's devotional thought. Hello, dear friends. Can you believe another week is already gone? It just boggles my mind. It seem, I even asked my children, does it seem like time is going faster? And when the young people say, it's going so fast, then I'm not crazy. Time is going faster. And friends, it's time to be prepared because I believe Jesus is coming soon. Let's have a word of prayer before we begin. Father in heaven, thank you so much that you've brought us through this week. We're still here. And we ask that you would please help us to be faithful. I pray you would forgive us for our sins. Help us to be ready for this beautiful Sabbath that's dawning upon us tonight. And we ask that you would bless us as we read with the Holy Spirit to understand what it is you want us to understand today. In Jesus' name, amen. What do we have today? Those who return to the old paths. Sounds interesting. Isaiah 35, 10. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Ah, oh, I want that day to come. The world is full of men and women who manifest no sense of obligation to God for their entrusted gifts. They do not realize that God has entrusted them with talents, not for self-glorification, but for His own name's glory. They are eager for distinction. There are men whom God has qualified with more than ordinary ability. They are deep thinkers, energetic and thorough, but many of them are bent upon the attainment of their own selfish ends without regard to the honor and glory of God. Some of these have seen the light of truth, but because they honored themselves, did not make God first, last, and best in everything, they have wandered away from Bible truth into skepticism and infidelity. I've seen it. You know, I've only been a Christian for about 20 years now, and I've seen a lot of brothers and sisters who were once so established and so firm in the faith that have left the faith not to go to some other faith, but they're just gone. They're just out. And I've seen that. It, it really, when we start wandering away from the Bible and Bible truths, we're going to become an infidel. That's the bottom line. When these are arrested by the chastisements of God and through affliction are, affliction are led to inquire for the old paths, the mist of skepticism is swept from their minds. Some of them repent return to the old love and set their feet in the way, cast up for the ransom of the Lord to walk in. No longer are they actuated by the love of money or by the love of ambition. The Spirit of God is working upon the heart. Excuse me. The Spirit of God working upon the heart is valued by them more highly than gold or the praise of men. So there are some that were having these issues and skepticism swept them away, but when they returned to the old paths, when they went to God and said, I'm coming back to the truth, they were reestablished and they said, there's nothing more important than my soul and the souls of others to give those to give unto God. When this amazing change is wrought, the thoughts are directed by the Spirit of God into new channels. The character is transformed and the aspirations of the soul reach out toward heavenly things. I wish I had a, a pen on me right now. I want to underline that, circle it, and put asterisks all around it. And I, in fact, I even want to say this again. I want to read this again. The Spirit of God working upon the heart is valued by them more highly than gold or the praise of men. When this amazing change is wrought, the thoughts are directed by the Spirit of God into new channels. The character is transformed. Oh! right? And the aspirations of the soul reach out toward heavenly things. So there is literally a change that can come. Oh, I need it. I want it daily. True religion has power today. It enables men to overcome 
the stubborn influence of pride, selfishness, and unbelief, and in the simplicity of true godliness to reveal a living connection with heaven. People have said to me, what if, I've even had family members say this, what if you get to the end of all this Christian and there is no God and there is no Jesus Christ? And it's just nothing because when we die, there is nothing. Or we go to this other life form and we continue this process of evolution. I say, you know what? The fact that the Bible is a supernatural manuscript and it talks about, you know, oh, I don't know, predicting the future and it does it perfectly and it has done it perfectly. And all of these things that were there in the prophetic word, first of all, that gave me a foundation of the word. But let's just say that that was amazingly contrived somehow. But the greater evidence is the evidence in my life. Because just praying to thin air, oh, help me be a better person, oh, air, it doesn't make you a better person. Amen. But praying to God, a living God, and my life is becoming transformed into that better person, Man, that's the strongest argument that all of this is true. And even if we get to the end of all of this, let's just say, and I'm sitting there, you know, as some other species evolved because I died and I was going through this reincarnation mumbo jumbo, but let's just say something like that happened. Friends, I can tell you right now, my life is better now because I'm living as a Christian. Okay, so I found a better way. Yes. Yes, true religion has power today, right there in black and white. And I'm living it, and you're living it, and you know that's true. It enables men to overcome stubborn influence of pride, and man, that's a stubborn influence. Selfishness and unbelief, and in the simplicity of true godliness, to reveal a living connection with heaven. The grace which Christ imparts, I'm going to give this to you, makes it possible for men to rise superior to all the infatuating temptations of Satan. It will lead them to cross to the cross of Jesus as active, devoted, loyal workers for the advancement of the truth of heaven. I can tell you, I was struggling with a little sin that nobody else needed to know of, but I was in, and I was struggling, well, my wife knew, but I was struggling with something. I was like, Lord, I just need your, your, your uh, victory over this. So I'm giving this to you. I'm asking you to give me your pure eyes, your pure ears, your pure thoughts, your pure tongue. And I was, I was battling with this. And you know what? Within a number of weeks, I'm telling you, God gave the victory. So just praying to some air doesn't do that. All the power of positive thinking doesn't do that. So it's an evidence that there is literally a living force. There's a spirit that wants to live within you. His name is Jesus Christ, and he will change you. That's the power of the gospel, man and woman and child. Praise the Lord. The fidelity to God has marked the heroes of faith from age to age as they have been brought conspicuously before the world, their light has shone forth. Their obedience to the command of Christ, go forward, has led others to glorify God. There are today moral heroes, men and women, who are living noble lives of self-denial, right here, right now. They have no ambition for worldly fame, amen. Their will is subordinate to the will of God, praise the Lord. They love God, the love of God inspires their ministry. To do good and to save souls is their highest aim. What a life we can each have. These have gained genuine knowledge, even the knowledge set forth by Christ in the words, This is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. John 17, 3. Friends, I want you to focus in on, I want to encourage you rather, to focus in on Jesus Christ and what He has in store for you. Because all He has for you is blessings and mercies and grace and life more abundantly. Yes, there will be some things to change. So what? They're usually the things that, that, that hold us back anyway. 
They're causing problems in us anyway. It's kind of like this. God says, you know, you're filled with cancer. I want to take away the cancer. No, I don't want the cancer to be gone. Why? Because I like how it feels. No, we don't like how cancer feels. We're just used to how the cancer feels. And we're used to sin in our life. And we're used to what it feels like. And God says, look, I want to help you. I want to take this out of your life. And then on the other side of recovery, when there is no cancer, when there is no sin, we go, oh, I could have had this all along. And Jesus says, yes, but like, at least you have it now. Praise God. I want to encourage you to stay in the old paths that leave unto righteousness, to stay in the Word of God, to study your Bible, to study the spirit of prophecy, to, to, to behold encouraging inspirational uh, spiritual programs, and let the other stuff just fall out of your life. Because when it does, all of a sudden you realize you didn't need it anyway, and it was hurting you like a cancer. God bless you, my friends. Oh, before we, we leave, remember uh, tomorrow, and by the way, enjoy the Sabbath tomorrow. It comes this evening. Read uh, November 29th. God has a tender care for His people and Christians to reflect the light of heaven. God bless you and we'll catch up with you on Monday on the keynote of Scripture. Until then, remember and never forget, our Father cares. God bless you.